Well, I actually had uh, two attempts at climbing the tower. The first time I went by myself and I wasn't really prepared for it psychologically or physically. I found that I wasn't fit enough and I found that I was just freaked out by it. It was just too much. I was scared of the height and just the exposure and the fact that I was by myself and, and that I, I would get caught and I was sort of just sticking my neck out a long way. It just felt too much. My name is Chris Hilton. I'm a mountaineer and I had the ambition to climb the tallest structure in the southern hemisphere, the Sydney Centre Point Tower, for about six years. It just appealed spontaneously to me. And since then I've realised that it involves a whole lot of aspects of my personality that make me want to climb a building in the city. I don't want to climb a lot of buildings. In fact, it's the only building I wanted to climb in the city. Chris Hilton is a 26-year-old engineer who was raised in the Snowy Mountains. He began rock climbing at 17, and for the next nine years, he scaled many of Australia's most spectacular cliffs. But it was the man-made Sydney Centre Point Tower that captured his imagination as a climber. During the late 1970s, Chris watched the 324-metre spire rise to dominate the city skyline. The idea of climbing the tower first came to me when I read an article in a newspaper about a, f a fellow in the United States who had climbed the highest building in the world, actually. And for the next four or five years, I thought about it, and sometimes seriously and sometimes just jokingly. And in the middle of 1986, I met Glenn Singleman, and we were both very interested in making films. And we decided to, climb, to try to climb the tower and make a film about it. And for the next six months, we planned in intensive detail the whole climb and film. Before I was going to be involved in the project, he had to convince me that he was going to be absolutely safe, that he wasn't going to fall off and kill himself, that he wasn't going to drop anything and kill anybody else. I mean, it, it, that just would have made it, you know, an impossible thing to do. And, but he, he convinced me. And after, after I'd been convinced, well, there was no turning back. He was really obsessed with the project and thought about it day and night, dreamt about it. Um, that's all he could talk about. Um, often while you were talking to him, you could tell his mind was ticking over about centre point while we were talking about something else. Uh, but to pull off something like that, I think that it was, it was necessary. It was absolutely vital that I found out everything that I could about the tower. So I got the plans from the engineers and all the literature and studied it intensely. I was incredibly aware that this climb was very much in the social arena and I didn't want to leave myself open to criticism of irresponsibility. So I had to make 100% sure that I could get myself out of any situation on the tower. Even if I couldn't climb to the top, I had to be able to get down under my own steam without needing to be rescued. When you talked before about walking round, once I'd worked out that it was actually possible to climb the tower, I tested out my ideas on a few climbing friends at a slide evening. One of my major worries was being caught before I'd got to start the climb. So my plan was to scramble across the adjacent roofs and be ready to begin the climb at midnight. Midnight, as soon as the lights go out, we're on. We can walk around the other side of that, climb the ladder up onto there, and then one of us stand on each other's shoulders, under the alarm, which you can see in the photo later, go across to these cables slope around, and the best cable to get onto is that one there, get onto the, attach our prussic cable, and then just go up for about four or five hours, or however long it takes, hopefully less. Then we move out on the eye boom, that should take only a half an hour or so, and then put the devices into the window cleaning tracks and half an hour up there. When I first realised Chris was serious about climbing Centre Point, I was very afraid for him. I was very worried because 
I, I thought that there was a great personal risk involved and that the consequences could be enormous and quite serious and I was worried that he hadn't taken them into account. I, I was worried that it, I was worried to find a justification for doing it. Um, I didn't want to think that he would risk so much just for a prank. I wanted to make some sort of personal statement by climbing it about the urban environment. I thought that it would be a nice image to climb, that people would get a kick out of seeing someone scale down the tallest building in Sydney to a human scale, just one individual under their own power bringing down a massive building which sets itself up as being huge and, uh, and impenetrable and intimidating. Climbing the tower and rock climbing on the Sydney sea cliffs is not really the same. But I did lots of climbing on the sea cliffs to prepare for the tower because it gave me physical fitness and psychological preparation. I enjoy climbing because I get several things out of it. I get the thrill of the ascent, of achieving something that's quite difficult. I get absorbed in the task of doing it to the point of not knowing where I am, you know, or not worrying about anything except the task that I'm doing, which overall is quite relaxing, and I enjoy being in the environment. It's a beautiful location. Despite all the preparation that I'd done for the climb, I still felt that I wanted someone to come along on the second attempt with me. So I persuaded Mark Spain, a friend of mine, to come along. Yeah, bro. I got quite excited about the idea of um, him climbing the tower. It was mainly his planning. He just asked me to come along to um, help with the climb. So it, it came... Uh, it was a fairly uh, major undertaking, and so we spent a lot of time getting prepared for it. Mark had a bit of catching up to do, so I took him around and showed him all the devices that I'd made for the three stages of the climb. For the first stage, we adapted a standard climbing technique called prussicking, where you slide two nylon slings up the cable. Going underneath the turret, we tested the hangar that I'd made at a nearby car park. The prospect of hanging upside down a thousand feet above Sydney was quite a scary one, and we wanted to make sure that we knew exactly what we had to do. For the final part of the climb, I hoped to use the window cleaning tracks on the outside of the turret. To practice this, I set up a similar piece of aluminium channel in the backyard and adapted some climbing devices called friends to fit into the track. The major worry for me was would the track be blocked at the bottom or not when I got there. The final hours for the second climb were just crazy. Chris had all his gear laid out over the living room floor. 
Mark was a lot more anxious then, and Chris was trying to keep Mark centred, and things just were really, really, you know, it's on now, let's move now, and it was really, really radical. I used to catch this bus to work each day, only this time, instead of looking up at the town and getting fearful about all the things that might go wrong, we were finally going to try to climb it. talk to him, could you then radio us and tell us what you, you've resolved about that? Um, otherwise, keep going, that's excellent. This is Bates out. Yeah, when Mark gets up here, give him some encouragement over the radio. There's nothing further, Chris, out. We've uh, just had a discussion with and um, it's been uh, decided that um, Chris will go on on his own and um, I'm going to go down. Over. It was about four o'clock in the morning, just traffic noise below us and black emptiness all around. Just Chris and I, quite hootedly too, trying to sort of come to a resolution of satisfying both our needs. Chris was, was very hyper, he was really keen to, uh, to keep going and I sort of felt that I was going to let him down. In fact, you know, you, you could almost sort of picture our discussion as a bit of a conflict. Um, but it was good that we were able to uh, give Chris all the resources and work out a way where he could achieve the climb and I could still get back down uh, with my reservations, my uncertainties and uh, uh, my doubt about it um, still being intact.
Somebody that would accuse me of being a criminal because I uh, trespassed on someone's building, I'd say, well, somebody puts their building up in front of my eyes and I have to look at it every day, all of us do, and often most, mo many of them are very ugly, so I, I don't see why I shouldn't go and make my statement upon the surface of their building. I can see that uh, the objections regarding damaging a property and I can see the objections regarding um, endangering people's lives, but I did neither of those two things, so uh, I don't think that I should be accused of any criminal charge. tracks I've found here are blocked. That means I'm going to have to move around and try to find an unblocked track. Otherwise, I can't get to the top and I'll have to go back. Just going around and taking one sling, putting it on the next section and then slowly moving around. I've also tied on by a rope which has got about sort of 10 metres gap so that if I fall, fall about 10 metres and then climb back up the rope again. But that's very unlikely to happen as long as I'm very careful to remember. And that's all it is, concentration. All the tracks I've seen so far are blocked. I don't want to keep going if it's the case all the way around. Yeah, it's very interesting to, to, to think about why, why people climb things because you find kids climbing 
monkey bars and kids climbing trees from a very early age. And architects are obsessed by building things tall and making them look spectacular. People like to they feel good if they've got the highest office in Sydney because they're looking down on everyone else and it, they feel powerful because of it. You get a feeling of power when you, when you climb something, whether it's a tower or, or a cliff face or a mountain. I just had a conversation with someone through the window and they couldn't believe it. Thank you. 
can't believe it, I've come all this way and I can't get my boot out of the body strap. down the stairs and I saw there was nobody sort of rushing up to meet me, I just got this, um, this little thrill that I might get away with it, you know, I just felt everything had gone so right that uh, something was going to let me get away with this for whatever reason. And uh, when I got to the bottom, I, I had this rope slung around me and I couldn't really walk out to the street with that, so I just put that in the pack and walked out and then didn't seem to be anyone around. And those that were around were on the other side of the road just looking up, so I, I just sort of walked nonchalantly off. I was feeling quite calm. I wasn't feeling agitated. So I just sort of strolled as if I owned the place and kept put a taxi in. I look back at that frenetic period of preparing for the climb and of afterwards trying to make the film on zero budget as a time that I never want to go back to. But basically because it was just a really difficult struggle and I didn't have time for my friends and I, I wasn't very relaxed. So I uh, I'd like to get, I don't mind getting obsessed again about other projects, I think it's, it's quite okay, you know, as long as there's an end to it. <laughs> 